Sometimes what helps to remember the different rabbis of the Talmud is to make a little story, to remember one little story that associates that rabbi with who he is and his placement in the whole world of the Talmud. So as I go through some different rabbis, I intend to give you a little story, a little glimpse of who that person was, and hopefully that'll help design or create a structure where you'll understand who fits in where. Because sometimes people hear the stories of the Talmud or different rabbis in the Talmud and they're not clear who's who and who lived when and who knew who. So, we start off with Hillel. Hillel the Elder arrives at around 30 B.C., 30 before zero. He comes from Babylon, and of course in Babylon he was used to a more relaxed life. He came to Judea and it was a difficult time. That was one of the worst times in Judea. You had Herod who was causing much difficulty to anyone who was living there, and many people were killed publicly for any reason or sometimes no reason, and Hillel arrives. Who was this man, Hillel? So Hillel was a student of Shemaiah and Avtalion. Have you heard of them? Shemaiah and Avtalion were people, the leaders or the rabbis or the teachers of the previous generation before Hillel. Of course, you remember the story of Hillel, where he climbed to the top of the roof because he was, he didn't have enough money to come and sit in the synagogue or sit in the study hall, and so he almost froze to death on the roof. That was Hillel. He sacrificed for the study of Torah, but for much of his life, we don't know much about him. The first time he appears is a little later on. It seems that he may have gone back to Babylon, back to Bavel, and then visited Judea one more time. And at that time in Judea, there were questions that arose about halacha, about how to do certain things, and people did not know. And one day, the question was asked to the B'nai B'Seira. B'nai B'Seira were the authorities, the rabbis at that time. And the B'nai B'Seira were asked a question. And the question was, that year, Passover came out on Shabbat, meaning Erev Pesach, the day before Passover, came out on Shabbat. And traditionally, on Erev Pesach, you bring the Passover lamb. You slaughter the Passover lamb. And the question was, are you allowed to slaughter the Passover lamb on Shabbat? Right? Or do we just say that since it's Shabbat, we cannot, this year we cannot slaughter the Passover lamb? So that question was brought to the B'nai B'Seira. And they were asked, what should we do? Should we slaughter the Passover lamb this year? Or since it's Shabbat, should we ignore the Passover lamb this year and we'll bring it next year? And the B'nai B'Seira apparently did not know. But some man who was present said, you know what? There was actually a man from Babylonia. His name is Hillel. And he studied with Shemaiah and Avtalion. And he might know the answer to this question. And so they found Hillel. And it seems that not only did Hillel know the answer, but the B'nai B'Seira were so humbled that they did not know the answer that they left their post. They said, we are no longer going to be answering these difficult questions. We now assign Hillel to be the lead posek, the lead master or nasi or ruler of halachic decisions here in Judea. So from then on, Hillel's name was important, and Hillel started a study house where people came to study, and we call it Beit Hillel, the house of Hillel, because Hillel had a way about him. He had a, an approach. He had a way to study. And you, rem- you may remember the stories of people coming to Hillel and saying, uh, I'll, only, I'll convert to Judaism if you teach me all of Judaism on one foot. And he was not angered. He just said, well, honor your fellow man. That is all of Judaism to respect other people. And you may remember the other story where a man was paid 400 zuz. There was a deal that was made, and a man said to his friend, he said, listen, if you can get Hillel angry, I will pay you 400 gold coins or something. 
And the man went to Hillel on Friday afternoon, just when Hillel was getting ready for Shabbat, and he asked him all kinds of ridiculous questions, and each question Hillel was not bothered by, and the man lost the bet. And he was actually pretty upset. So he got upset instead of Hillel getting upset. Point is, Hillel was known to be a calm person and a good person. Shammai was known to be a stronger personality. Now, Hillel, not only, not only was he a posek, which he decided halachic decisions, but he also formulated, probably not created, but he formulated or, or edited seven rules of how to understand the Torah. One of those is the Kalva Chomer. Have you ever heard of the Kalva Chomer? Like, well, if X is the case in this situation, then for sure in this other situation, X will also be the case, or X will also be the Halacha. So Hillel was the one who designed that and helped that come into being. So Hillel had a son, who was his son, Shimon. I don't really know a lot about Shimon, his son, but we do know a nice amount about Hillel's grandson. And his grandson was Gamliel Hazaken, Gamliel the Elder. Have you ever heard of Gamliel? Well, of course, because you hear the name Gamliel a lot, but people get confused. There are two or three or four Gamliels, but there are two really important ones. The first one is Gamliel Hazaken, the grandson of Hillel. Now, did you know that Hillel we are told, came, was a descendant of the son of David, was a descendant of David, of King David. And that's why he had all this respect. Because even though Judea was in turmoil, but people felt, well, we have a descendant of King David among us who is helping us and ruling us and giving us guidance and helping us understand the Torah. He was actually... King David had a number of sons, and we are told that Hillel came from Shephatiah, which was one of the sons of King David. Either way, you can just imagine the respect that Hillel had and the respect that Gamliel, the grandson of Hillel, also had. So Gamliel Hazaken, Gamliel the elder, also had a lot of respect. Now Gamliel Hazaken is remembered for a couple of reasons. Some say that until the time of Gamliel Hazaken, or until the time that Gamliel died, People learned Torah standing because they had such respect for the Torah. That was very unusual. And then after that time, people sat down. Another thing, Gamliel noticed that people in that time were really poor. And what happened was, there was this custom that when someone would die, they would dress the dead body with all kinds of luxurious items. And it it was very expensive to treat the body or dress the body, however they did it. And many people who were poor were embarrassed because they couldn't treat their dead with that kind of respect, and so they just ran away. They just left town because they couldn't do anything with their dead body that would be respected by the community. Gamliel had an idea. He said, when I die, even though I'm from a royal family and we have plenty of money, but when I, Gamliel, die... I want to be buried in flax. Flax is the simplest of garments. And because Gamliel had the fortitude to make that demand that he be buried in flax instead of royal garments, everyone else from that time also had that feeling and they felt comfortable dressing their dead in just flax or simple garments. And it made it easier for the Jewish people of that time to afford to bury their dead respectfully.